Hey curl friends, welcome back to the Hey Curl Friend podcast. I'm your host, Kaziah Dama, the founder of Swirly Curly Curl College and the author of The Swirly Curly Method, the easy step-by-step -step guide to getting you the curls that you love. In today's podcast episode, I have the honor of interviewing Nana Stella. She is the founder of The Wrap Life. If you haven't heard about The Wrap Life, I know you have seen the pictures online. She creates these gorgeous, beautiful, tribal African print head wraps that she is known for. You guys, her stuff is so beautiful. And Nana and I sat down to talk, and I kid you not that this conversation took a life of its own and I was so glad that it did. I literally threw out my questions. I was like, I'm gonna throw these out because the questions and everything that's happening right now is so much better than I could have created and curated. So the conversation starts off with Nana just speaking out about, you know, how do we feel about our hair? And Nana actually talks about how she just shaved her head recently and the reasons why. She also talks about, you know, following that inner voice inside. We also discuss, of course, creating products and where the brand is going next. And last but not least, how to be more self-expressed in our work, in our lives. I mean, this episode is so good. There's so many nuggets. So you're gonna wanna listen, trust me, from start to finish. So make sure you're ready, you have something to drink, you have your earphones, whatever you need, because I mean, this is a jaw dropper. It's such a good conversation. All right, so if you're ready, let's go ahead and get into it. A girlfriend embraces her natural beauty and reclaims the narrative of how society tells her she's supposed to look. She's confident in who she is, how she looks, and inspires other sisters to do the same. She is on a mission to be her best self so that she can support her family, friends, and community even more. Welcome to the Hey Girlfriend podcast, the place where we share how to get beautiful natural hair with less time and effort and hear from women about their real natural hair journeys. We also share stories from inspiring sisters, brothers, and Black-owned businesses who are doing great things in our community. I'm your host, Kaziah Dama, founder and CEO of Swirly Curly Curl College and the author of The Swirly Curly Method, the easy step-by-step -step guide to getting you the curls that you love. Nana, welcome to the Hey Curl Friend podcast. I'm so excited to have you on today. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, but well, you look yeah. gorgeous and Thank stunning, you. and I'm just like, oh my gosh, she's so pretty. Um, <laughs> You're making me blush. Oh my gosh. Oh, stop it. oh my gosh. <laughs> You're gorgeous too. Oh, thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate that. Um, and honestly, I'm not saying that just just to say that I'm like, she's so pretty. I just like your thank features you. and everything. Um, so Nana, I want to take it back to your childhood as a young girl. What was your experience of like your hair growing up and like beauty? I'd love for you to share that with us. Thank you. Um, that's a great question. Um, I feel like most of my energy as a child was spent wanting my hair to be something other than what it was. Um, I think growing up just in media and in movies, I didn't really see women who looked like me. Their hair texture didn't look like mine. So I always felt like I needed to change it. Um, but overall, I guess the older I got, the more comfortable I got with my hair. I went natural in 2003 when it wasn't really a thing, especially in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I remember going to work with my Afro and I was waiting tables at the time. I actually went home early because I was so self-conscious about it. And people were sort of, they weren't used to natural hair. So they looked at me like, what are you doing? Like, why would you leave home like that? And you could see the looks and that's, I was like, oh my gosh, have I done something wrong? And so um, at the beginning, it was just being in the practice of being confident and being okay. And then over the years, I would wear my fro and I would wear my natural hair and I loved it. And I think a lot of that had to do with confidence, you know? So um, yeah, it's been an experience, but I've loved it. Yeah, I can so relate to that in terms of going natural and and just getting like yourself used to like how you actually look. And yeah. um, I'm so curious, these people that were like giving you these looks, were they coworkers? Were they, you know, guests in the restaurant? They were coworkers. Okay. Um, and some of it is probably my own insecurity because I was newly natural. But, you know, I think growing up in the South and then as a Black woman, you know that look you get from an older Black woman, kind of like with the auntie vibe. And they're looking at you like, do you not love yourself? Like, it's that kind of look like, why would you leave home like that? So you kind of understand certain looks. And so I was just so young. I thought, well, have I done something wrong? I didn't know that, you know, I could wear my hair like that. So I just internalized everything. And then 
it was a mess. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know. And of course, you know, it's so 2003, that's like really early on. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you people are very shocked to see it, but nowadays, you know, it's, it's a little it's more like acceptable. acceptable. It's like, yeah. we see ads, you know, commercials and all of that stuff. So look, y'all youngins, y'all got it easy. Is <laughs> right. just done the work for you guys. Yes. <laughs> Pave the way. I love that. Yeah. So that's the beginning of the story, but eventually I transitioned to be natural. And then most recently I just shaved it off. There's a whole story behind that as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I think we should actually get into that right now. So. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to be honest without being, um, what's the word? What's the word? Controversial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to speak about it honestly without pissing people off. Well, you could totally do it here. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have my permission. Yeah. So for me, um, it was, it was quite a process. I've been wanting to shave my head for two years or so. And then, um, Last year, I went through a life transition with a personal separation, and so it was really heavy in my mind. I would look in the mirror and I would see my hair, and I didn't like it. Yeah. And when I did like it, I had to do so much to like it. I had to put in products, I had to do a certain thing in the shower, I had to dry it with a certain towel, and I didn't, I didn't like all of that. So, um, so part of my healing um, last year, a lot of it was mushrooms, and so. There's this one moment when I'm doing mushrooms and I'd already cut my hair. It's like I was trying to let go of these attachments and things that I was dealing with at the time. So I feel like that was like the first step. And then I'm doing the mushrooms and I'm, I'm talking to myself or I'm talking to whatever entity I'm connecting with. And I say, I think it's time for me to shave my head. And then I ask, is the time now? And it said, um, not yet. So after that session of mushrooms, I did a three day fast where all I did was have like coconut juice and um, light liquids. And then as I was ending the fast, I'm in the bathroom and I'm in the mirror and I know that it's time. So I get my clippers and I shave my head. That's the story. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. Wow. Well, what I love so much is that you're first, you were like, listening to yourself, you're really in tune with how you felt about something and mm -hmm. you weren't rejecting it because yeah. I think a lot of us are like, oh, but we need to have hair or we need to look beautiful or this is, yeah. the, you know, people aren't going to accept me with a shave head or they're going to think this. And you were more so accepting of where you were and what you didn't like and what wasn't working for you. Yeah. And, uh, I really had to have some honest dialogue because, and that's one thing that I wanted to talk to you about as I was thinking about the conversation today. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think there's sort of this unfair expectation for women of color to love their hair. When we don't like it, we get this whole story about self-hatred. And I think that's really extreme. Mm -hmm. I feel like we should have the ability to say we don't like our hair and we can still love ourselves and just not like our hair, like other women of other races and cultures. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just like going to throw out my questions because okay. <laughs> they're so general and this is way better. Um, <laughs> That's really interesting that you said that. So, I mean, I'm curious because I feel like when I don't like something, I kind of like cut off that part of me. Mm -hmm. And then there starts to become this friction or this um, this heavy energy um, that I'm rejecting a part of me. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that, you know, loving everything is hard. You know, sometimes yeah. we just, there's just things there that are just kind of like, we have to make a men with, or we have to figure out a way to just make it work. Mm -hmm. um, so that's interesting that you said that. What do you think would be like, if somebody says, I don't like my hair and, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think energetically would be, I guess the repercussions or how would mm -hmm. their life look like? Cause I've went around, went around not liking my hair for many, many years and mm -hmm. just dealing with it and, and trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I, I literally started saying affirmations to myself and being like, my hair is beautiful. Like I'm going to, you know, work with it. Like I'm going to find things about it. That's beautiful. And when I started focusing on that, my whole perception changed, my hair mm -hmm. changed, like physically, like everything in my life changed. Yeah. No, that's, that's a great question. Oh, there's so much there. Um, when you said, what are their options? I feel like first it's important to be honest about how you feel. You have to tell yourself the truth, right? Okay. So let's say for me, if I didn't like my hair, I could say, okay, well, do I want to relax it? I didn't want to do that. 
Um, do I want to get braids? Do I want to, what do I want to wear a wig? I didn't really want to do that. So for me, it was shaving it off and then discovering how I feel in that new space. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, most people have never seen their scalp. I think it's so cool that I know what my head looks like, right? <laughs> so cool. um, and then there was another thing that you said. Yeah, like I, I was thinking, how would it be for somebody to cut off that part of them saying like, oh, I don't like my hair. I feel like that creates a barrier, like a wall. Yeah, and you're talking about emotionally cut that off, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think a lot of us are doing that and we're not aware of it. We just hear the other voices and we hear society saying, well, you're natural, you should love it if you're a black woman and you love yourself. So it's mm -hmm. like you're backing yourself into this corner where you don't know what's true for you. Yeah, that's yeah. I really like where this is going. I like where you're going because I will say that, you know, they say like the first step to like any recovery or anything is, is being honest, is acknowledging mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. then it diminishes. And yeah. then from there you can start to work on, well, what's next? Like, absolutely. is absolutely. it like me saying, oh, I don't like my natural hair and I'm going to put a weave in because, because I'm choosing to versus mm -hmm. defaulting to just putting a wig because you're like, oh, I just want my hair to be straight. So I think there's a process of understanding. And I think that's kind of what you're hitting on is like, yeah. you know, like actually understanding why you're doing what you're doing rather mm -hmm. than just doing it. Absolutely. And to answer your question about how you move throughout life, if you're trying to fit into something that isn't true to you, I think it, I think it has an impact on your confidence and how you perceive yourself in the world. Because on yeah. some unconscious level, you're not being honest. And if you're not being honest, then how are you living your best life? Yeah, that's so true. I've definitely had women and girls like, you know, in certain areas of the fields that I've worked in, you know, I've been a waitress, I've been an actress, I've done personal training, and I've seen them where they definitely have, you know, braids or weave or natural hair, and they're so uncomfortable with it, mm -hmm. because I think they're trying to fit in or trying to be a certain way. And, um, and I know I've been there before. I mean, when I was in a high school, uh, for my senior pictures, I was like, this year, I want to look cute. Like, I am tired of trying to relax this hair and it's so short. I was like, I'm going to get like a full, I got like a full, what do they say? Like lace front weave. Oh, okay. Like the whole thing. I took my senior pictures. I paid about like three, $400. And at the time I was working at a grocery store. So that's a lot of money. You know, it's like yeah. saving up. And so I was like, oh my God, I don't want to take it out. I'm just going to go to school with this and I'll take it out later. So then I returned to school, senior year of high school, and everyone was like, oh my God, they're like, your hair grew so long. <laughs> oh, so they were like, touching, like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. You're so pretty. And I had gotten more attention than I had ever gotten ever. Like guys were looking at me, people were saying, wow. and I was, I was shocked that people thought it was my hair. Cause I was like, y'all, <laughs> just, like, how did I go like 18 inches longer? <laughs> like this Yeah, is were they mostly white? No, honestly, the school was, it was mixed. It was mixed, okay. Okay. but let me think, I'm thinking back. So maybe the people that were commenting were white, mm -hmm. um, but I decided to keep it in. Cause I was like, what am I going to do now? They think this is my hair. <laughs> got all this attention. <laughs> yeah. And so I ended up, I had to like, basically lie my butt off, like all throughout Wow. you know, my senior year. And I slowly started to taper away. I was like, oh yeah, I cut it. Like I just got like a shorter one. And then I started to leave out a little bit of the top of my hair and it's so uncomfortable. And the minute I took those out. How did it feel to be performing like that in that way? You know how it is. You're like sweating. You're like, yeah. you just feel uncomfortable. And I remember like, like people would come over and touch my head just because they were like playing around, you know, it's like lunchtime. And I was like, oh my God, like, did they feel that brick under here? Like the braids, you know? Wow. Um, so it was really uncomfortable. I felt like some people knew and some people didn't want to say anything. And it yeah. just took up a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. That sounds exhausting, honestly. Yeah. Cool. How did you meet your husband? Yeah. So um, I'm like, wait, this is your podcast. <laughs> no, that's but I so love weird. this. I feel like we're just talking. Yeah. That's totally yeah. cool. So I actually met my husband in your, you may be familiar in West Hollywood at Gracias Madre. It's like a vegan Mexican food restaurant. It's been a while since I lived there. Maybe it's new. Yeah. 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 And so I was actually leaving like a party with two of my best friends and we were walking, we we're like, let's go get something to eat. And so we we're walking to this restaurant mm -hmm. and he was actually leaving dinner with a friend and on the way to the restaurant, we were talking about what we want in relationships, what we want in men. And my friend, she was already in a committed relationship. She was saying what she loves about her guy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ladies, I was like, listen, 
I was like, I am very clear now. I was like, no more short guys. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Give me short guys a chance. And I literally, before that had made a list. I was like, these are my non-negotiables and these are like my must have or non-negotiables and negotiables. And I got very clear and I started to like visualize him because what I thought back then is I was like, okay. I was like, I'm doing this like love dating thing all wrong. I'm like, it's just not working. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I do know whenever I want something, what do I do? I write it down. I get very specific. So I was like, I'm just going to do that with like love. Duh. And right. I'm going to, and I'm going to like study dating. Like, you know, we study like, you know, to go to school to become a chemist. I'm like, why wouldn't we study love? So we did. So I did that. And then on the way to the restaurant, we walk in and my now husband is walking out like literally at the same time. And my best friend is with me and she grabs my arm and she's like, oh my God, she's like, this guy's going to come talk to us. And I was like, what? Like, it's just something so unusual for her to do. And Mark walks up and he starts talking and he's British. So he's like a mix British boy and he has like blue eyes. He had like a full on beard and it has like some red in it. So I did not know what was going on. I was like, one, I was like, he fine. Two, he has an accent. I can't know where he's coming from. And I'm like, oh my God. So I know you've seen this in the movies where like time stops and, yeah. and it's quiet and the person's like in their thoughts and in their head. And that was me. And then about, you know, a minute later, like my inner voice was like, bitch, say something. And so I was like, oh my God. And I like snapped out of it and I started talking to him. And basically after that, um, he went with us to like another restaurant. We couldn't get a, um, a reservation. We ended up exchanging numbers. And at that time when we were exchanging numbers, I heard this voice very, very loud and clear that said husband. And I was like, huh? It was just like somebody like whispered in my ear and I was like, that's cool. really I interesting. That. And wow. I didn't know until like months later that in that same very moment, my husband said he heard a voice say, this is your wife. And wow. he said he had been praying. He'd been asking God. He's like, I, I you know, he's like, I was tired of dating and being out there. And so that's basically how we met. We've been together ever since. Wow. That's a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah. So, um, I want to circle back around, um, you know, the motivation be behind shaving your head and how have you felt since shaving your head? Like what's been your experience, like socially, like for you as well? I'm so curious. Mm. I, that's kind of hard to answer socially. I feel like I'm always home or traveling to a new place. Um, I don't know. I spend a lot of time, um, alone right now. So I go to the beach or I'm home or I'm reading or I'm working. So I would say it doesn't feel any different externally, but I feel different inside, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, I feel more confident. Um, things are just easier because I don't have to worry about anything. I just shave my head and I'm done. I don't have to think about styling it or washing it. It's, there's just so much more freedom. And I really appreciate that. And it's low maintenance too. Um, before I had this hairstyle, I had a haircut and I had to go to the barber every couple weeks. And I don't like having to maintain things. I just like to have it be easy. So um, I feel more free. I saw your previous hairstyle. It was yeah. kind of like a, like a fade on the back. It was so cute, but Thank I can you. see what you mean. It's like shaving your legs every couple of weeks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And when you get your nails done and it's just so much work and yeah. I feel you on that. So I'm, I'm curious, like when you do go out, do you notice you get any different looks? Do you get any different attention, any different treatment, or is it all just the same? I feel like the looks that I get, I wouldn't connect it to my hair. I feel like it's my body and the way that I dress. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the way that I walk and enter a space maybe. Um, but honestly, girl, I just be in my own world. Like when I go out and I sit at the bar, I'm usually journaling or listening to something or reading. So I feel like I'm just, I'm aware of my environment, but I'm kind of in my own world wherever I go. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. Do you know what your Myers-Briggs personality type is? Oh, I feel like it was, oh, I used to remember this. It was like the one, it's like I in something J. I don't remember. I actually thought about that this week. Uh, why do you ask? What's yours? Well, I'm an INFJ. Okay. And I was I really curious what you're doing. Yeah, no way. It's definitely intuitive. Mm -hmm. And then you're either feeling or sorry, you're intuitive. Feeling or judging. 
And then it's feeling or thinking, which is the T or the F, and then there's judging or proceeding. So if you're more structured, which you seem like you're more structured or you're more like go with the flow. I feel like it's a blend of both. Mm -hmm. I've become more go with the flow over the last year. Yeah. Like we yeah. all have, have, you know, some of all of it, but I think yeah. there's one that we gravitate towards. Like for yeah. me, like I do like, I go with the flow, but like for an example, like a flight, you know, catching a flight or going on a trip, I'm like, okay, we have to plan everything. Like I need to know all of this. Mm -hmm. And that's where the judging kicks in, which is really mm -hmm. weird. It's kind of like organization <laughs> being yeah. organized. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I'm, I'm going to circle back on that later. We'll yeah. email you because I, I, I got to know. So because the fact that you were saying that you can go to a bar, you can go to the beach on your own and you can just be in your own world. Mm -hmm. I was, I was curious to see if you were an introvert or not. I think I'm definitely an introvert. Um, like I'm excited to be doing this with you, but it's still, I can sense that I'm not fully seated in myself yet because this is our first time meeting. Yeah. And I almost want to have two conversations with you so I can feel you and understand you. And then we can have the real conversation. Right. So yeah. it's like, um, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I get that for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Did I not tell you that when it comes to moisture and curl definition, it is not how much products you're going to be putting on your hair. And in fact, a lot of you are using the wrong products to get moisturized and define curls. The problem is we've all been told a lie. We have been told that butters and oils are going to be moisturizing to our hair. And the more we add to our hair, the better our hair is going to be. And in fact, those are the products and the culprits for you not having moisturized and defined curls. It's actually a myth. The products that are going to hydrate your hair are going to be water-based products. Now, you may have heard my story that going to the store where I could not find one product line on the market that was completely water-based. That means a water-based shampoo, conditioner, styling cream, and gel all in one. So what did I do? Crazy Kazaya went ahead and made my own product-based line. I partnered with a top black hair chemist in the industry, and I mean, when I say top, He's been in the industry for over 20 years and has worked for some of the top brands. Now we partnered together to make the Mango Moringa Moisture Max line to moisturize our hair and help to find those curls. This product line is amazing at helping to add moisture to your hair and keeping your hair moisturized. Now, if you are tired of having dry, damaged, broken and brittle hair, trust me on this, switch over right now to the Moisture Max line because just in a few weeks, you're gonna notice the difference of your hair retaining way more moisture, being stronger, starting to act and do what you want it to do. Because when your hair is moisturized, you can have everything else. You can have curl definition, you can have longer, stronger hair, and you can have hair that works all week long. So head over to swirlycurlyhair.com, use the coupon podcast15 to get yourself 15% off right now of the Moisture Max line, and trust me, you're gonna love it. You'll thank me later. So I'm curious to hear your story about how you started the rap life. Okay, perfect. Um, it's sort of a long story. Um, so I was in a space in my life where I read my one of my old journals and I realized that I was complaining about the same thing. And I realized I just needed to figure it out, right? So I created this 30 day process for myself. Um, part of it was like the artist way. It's like three pages of writing. Yeah, and I, I wake up at the same time every day. I have to do gratitude, the artist way. And then I have to write about something that I did well for the previous day. And this was so hard for me. At first, I felt like I was making things up because I wasn't in the practice of acknowledging what I was good at. So I did all this work for 30 days. At the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm done. I didn't really expect anything like big to happen. Um, and then after that, I felt like I wanted to express myself more after doing all this work. I used to wear like really big statement earrings and lip color, but I wanted like another layer to express myself. So I started wearing scarves on my head. I had like a winter scarf from Target and I wore it as a head wrap. And then I thought I really want some West African prints, but I didn't want to get on the train and go up to Harlem. I just wanted to like look up a website online, find a curated shop, order some stuff and have it shipped to my house. So I'm Googling for like three days and I don't see anything. And I felt a little entitled because I was upset. I was like, why is there no shop for this? Um, so then because I'd done all that work and I felt so much more confident, I had this sort of voice, like this nudge that said, you can start this. 
And so I was like, okay, I'm going to start a company and I'm going to sell head wraps and it's going to be cool. And that's how I got the idea to start the wrap play. Oh my gosh. That is so <laughs> awesome. I love yeah. that. Okay. So backing up to the artist's way, I'm actually reading that book right now. Okay. Um, and it's awesome and amazing. And I, I'm just like, wow, this is already changing my life. Um, I love that you created and like more extensive, you know, morning pages, I guess you can say. Yeah. And then, um, you know, it's funny how when we start our businesses, it's really from like solving our own problems, mm -hmm. you know, and then it starts to expand from there. Yeah. And what would you say since starting it has led you to keep going with it and build and create? Cause I'm sure you know, in the beginning, you're like, I'm going to start a business, but you never know where it's going to go. Yeah. So I'm curious on what's keeping you going and with the business. Oh, wow. That's a big question. <laughs> I feel like I could, I would give a different answer for each of the last few years. Um, what I really enjoy about my work is the creation process. So I had a meeting with my product manager yesterday and she has all these great ideas and I was just getting so excited on the call. And I was thinking, this is the kind of work I want to focus on. So I really like working to create something. We order it, it's now available, and we get to tell the story and then share it with the world. That's the process that I love. So I really look forward to that. Um, I also understand that there are people who work with me and I wanna make sure that they're good. So even if I'm not feeling my best or I feel like I wanna give up, I think about them and their families. Um, and I really appreciate the life that this has afforded me. And it's it's not even about money. It's just, I get to create things that I want. And I think that's such a privilege. I get to say, I wanna make this thing and I wanna do it well. And then I get to do it with other people that I enjoy working with. And then we get to offer it to people who will appreciate it. I think, I feel so grateful that I can do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I love all the prints that you often pick and create. They're yeah. so diverse and, mm -hmm. and not just like culturally, but also like, on how you can wear it from like daytime to nighttime, to weddings, to, you know, special occasions yeah. and all of that. Have you, um, at all been to Africa? Yes. I've been to Africa three times. I went to Ghana in 2016 and then I've been to Morocco twice. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you have roots there? Like, do you have family or do you know? if you're connected? Yes, my father was born in Nigeria and then he came here to the States in the late seventies, but I don't know much about the man. So there's that. Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> <Those> situations. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, how do I ask if you're African without like just straight yeah. up say it? No. So my dad is um, Nigerian. Okay. And yeah, and he actually lives in Nigeria. He's in, he comes like half and half. He's in the okay. States too. So cool. I was curious if, if that's where where you had some lineage. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, okay. So what inspires you like for your products and patterns? Like where you get, where do you get your inspiration for your designs? Um, a lot of it is a gut feeling. Um, I also work with textile designers. So we'll meet and discuss the vibe and the story. Um, and then a lot of times when I'm sourcing fabrics for me, it's really the hand feel like how it feels. And then I imagine it on the skin. So a lot of it is feeling through it. And then I let my product manager do all the numbers and strategy and things like that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question about styling head wraps and head scarves. Like I was watching your videos and I'm like, how does this girl know what to do? So can you explain how you style mm -hmm. and then explain a little bit for somebody who's new to styling, like what they can focus on to get like a good head wrap. Absolutely. So how I style, honestly, it is just very intuitive. You know, sometimes I'll put it on like this and then I'll pause for a minute and then my hands just start moving and tucking things into place. Um, I think it helps if you try not to overthink it, just move stuff around. Does this feel good? If I put this here, does it fit? Is this tight enough? Is this loose enough? And you just sort of ask questions and adjust. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I do it. Um, and I think that if you're starting and you want some pointers, um, it's important to get that, that base 
style or the base um, action right. So if it's the first knot, you want to make sure it's a good fit. If it's loose, you're going to have to start over. If it's too tight, it's going to be uncomfortable. So the first placement, whether it's a wraparound or not, make sure it's where you want it to be and it feels right before you move forward. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Have you ever done the same like head wrap style twice? Absolutely. I do have one of my favorite styles. I was actually going to wear a head wrap for you. And I was like, uh, I don't know. So I better put this on. Um, yeah, there's a there's a couple of styles that you can duplicate um, mm -hmm. over and over. But then there are some where there are like these slight differences and you can never do it mm -hmm. the same again. And you just kind of appreciate it and let it go. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a, a lifetime thing. I, I agree. It's like, it just happened to lay that way. Like the yeah. you're like, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> I've actually done styles before where it's like, I really love this. And I try to just take it off. Like it's a hat and maybe I can put it on again the next day. Cause it's so perfect. Um, but yeah, I understand. Yeah. That that's, that's a really good tip. I never yeah. thought about that. Yeah. You can do I'm that. Gonna, yeah. Um, so I'm curious on what was your very first product that you came out with for the rap life? The very first product, um, it was a West African strip of fabric that we styled into a head wrap. Um, now we call this product our standard head wrap, um, and it's improved over time. So it used to be straight corners, and now we do rounded corners, so it's easier for tucking. Um, but yeah, it was the standard head wrap with a West African print, and I think we had eight prints in the shop. Wow. And I think I, I, think I charged... <laughs> I think it was like 12 or $15. I had, I didn't know anything about pricing. I was just like, oh, are they going to pay this? Like I had no idea. And then eventually I had to adjust because it just didn't make sense. But um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I have similar where I came out with, I think I had like four different colors of my hair ties. It was like black, brown, pink, and purple. Same. I think I charged like, I don't know, like ten nine nine ninety nine, And then like, I was making it by hand. And like, when I actually did the cost, I was making like no money. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, make it, you just want to like do something and make it. And you're not thinking about numbers or spreadsheets or costing. Yeah. 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 Would you say that business and entrepreneurship is, you know, is a career path for you, like a life purpose, or do you feel like it's just um, an extension of you? Oh, that's a really big question. Oh my goodness. Um, for me, life purpose, no. Um, extension, yes. There, I do have some challenges with the blending because currently it consumes my life. So it's strange to say this isn't my purpose, but it consumes my life. And so it's like, girl, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. We're going to have to meet up. Like yeah. we have so much to talk about. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it's like, I, I understand that now I'm in a space where I am tr transitioning into something else. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I have some feelings about it. Um, and I'm trying to be in the practice of surrendering instead of being afraid in, instead of being afraid or instead of like, okay, how do I do this? How do I strategize? Should I plan this? I'm just saying, okay, inspire me to move in this direction and I will move in that direction. And I trust I'm getting to my best place. That's the only thing I can do or I'll overthink it and stress out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, everything you said, I can agree a hundred percent. Like I think in my experience from running my brands fairly curly, like it's an ex extension of me. Um, I love business. I love entrepreneurship as well, but I'm also like so many ideas and creative ideas have been coming to me over the years. And yeah. I want to birth those a lot, you know, these I, days. I very much understand that. Um, at one point I was struggling with, like I would wake up and I would do my creative things or I would paint or I would meditate and I would journal. And then I have to shift into work where I'm using a completely different part of my brain. And that shift was so hard for me at some point because I didn't want to leave the world of creating and now sit down and have budget meetings. I was like, I don't want to do this. And so um, it's, a, it's a challenge. And I'd like entrepreneurs to have more conversations about things like this because I think that we just think, we believe, well, we know that we're privileged. And so I realized that a part of me felt ungrateful mm when I said, when I started thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. What's, what's next for me? You know, I'm sitting in a great place and I have some savings and I can live well. 
how dare I say, well, maybe I don't want to do this anymore, you know? So I've been having these conversations where I'm trying to be more honest with myself so I can get to where I need to be and not hold myself in this place too long if I'm not supposed to be here as long as I have been. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we're, we're going to meet up. <laughs> I, got, I got a lot to say about that. Um, and yeah, and I'll also say like, you know, the thoughts that go on is of course, you know, like all of our customers, all the people who like love our products and yes. has changed their lives, you know, and then you see these three, $400 orders coming in. And you're like, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing, yeah. you know, and you know make me cry. I feel like we're thinking about uh, the same thing. And I think a lot of women are in this space. And if yeah. I can be honest, sometimes I don't know if even this way of working is natural. Yeah. Especially for women, because there's so much to be said here. Like, you know, having, I had a conversation with a friend where I was like, I feel like being a woman these days is like even harder because, you know, you know, biologically, instinctually, all of these things, like we're not doing those things on a daily basis, which is like working with our hands, being creative. We're doing, you know, these more like masculine energy or, you know, mentally um, heady things, but there's so much, I guess you can say like liberation and power in that too. And I also yeah. love that, mm -hmm. but then I also want the other, and I'm like, I think we're kind of driving ourselves crazy. And I'm like, where do we find, you know, I don't know if it's the balance. I think it's, I think there's a shift happening and I think things are, you know, I mean, you've probably seen it. Like some of these really big founders that were in these big brands after they had babies, they like stepped down, you know, they had some put someone else in place or like, you know what? I think, Absolutely. you know, my, my time is to be, you know, doing these other things. So, um, lots to say there and that's things i've been exploring as well and it's like how do we keep you know these creations how do we keep them you know going and and flourishing and continuing to support you know people on their journeys without us being burnt out and you know creatively um not expressed absolutely absolutely how do you manage or do you when you're trying to balance sometimes when I give myself permission to do the more creative thing on some level, it feels like I'm neglecting what I should be doing for work. Do you ever feel that? And if so, how do you balance that feeling? A hundred percent. I think, um, I've gotten to a place. I haven't been very good at that. I, I've been going with what makes me feel good. I guess you could say like mentally. So I always would go and just get the thing done. But now I've just got to a place where I was like, I'm just not going to stress anymore. Like Me too. I just, I've just made the choice where I'm like, look, it will happen. And I, I feel like I've been through so much. I've been with Amazon shutting us down, like all, you know, so many times that I'm just like, when it gets solved, it gets solved and we'll get there. And I think that's the thing is business, it ebbs and flows. And I think we have this understanding that we should be up, 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 up and up. Yeah. And I think, you know, now I know the nature of business. I've been in it for so long that we're going to have down months and we're going to have up months. And then there's down seasons and high seasons and you just have to prepare for it. And then it's like, I think if we can plan ahead then it can be a little bit better. You can write it a little bit better. And I've just been, I've just been choosing my like well-being more. I'm like, look, I'm just going to go do that workout. Me too. And like, and, and I've just been, and also, yeah, just being honest. Like, I'm sorry, I missed the call. Like yeah. I have crying babies and you know, this is, this is what it is. And so it's an interesting place to be because part of me feels again, like I'm not doing enough. And I was, this was my next question. Do you know what your Enneagram number is? Oh, you're asking such good questions. I know, and I didn't prepare you for these. <laughs> I don't remember, but I've done both of these. I want to like check my email so I can give yeah, you Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, and I have even more tasks. I'm going to like send you the whole thing because I'm okay. like, there's other ones that are like, there's like the Colby, which I'm pretty sure you're probably the quick, a quick start as well in the Colby if you've taken that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, so what I was going to say is an Enneagram 3, I'm, it's the achiever performer. We like they say living in America is like not the best for achiever performers because we always want to achieve something. Mm. And so I've been like stripping away at that and being like, it's okay to not like have this be the absolute best. Absolutely. So yeah, Absolutely. it's definitely a work in progress. And, and it's so funny because it's all mental. It is. It really is. And your perception of the thing. Yeah. 
And it's just us mentally letting go of it or changing it. Yeah. Sometimes I try to pretend I'm a man. Mm. (laughs) I'm like, how would he feel about this? Would he feel guilty? Would he just do it? And I say, okay, I'm just going to do it. (laughs) Wow. That's interesting. Attachment. (laughs) I know. I know. Yeah. I get so like, oh my God, I have to make the best choice kind of thing, you know? Yeah, of course. Oh my God. I love that. It's so good. Okay. So um, I want to circle back. Okay. So one of your highlights, I mean, and it's so funny because I feel kind of silly for saying this Mm -hmm. um, because we're talking about things that I think are so deep and personal, but you did style turbans for Vogue Arabia. Yeah. And I saw that cover. Wasn't it stunning? Oh my God. Please tell me about that experience. Like, did you fly out there? Like, where was the shoot? Like, yeah. how was it meeting Aman? Yeah. So how this happened was, um, I think the shoot was maybe Q1. So at the top of the year, I'm thinking about some things that I want to happen for me. And I say, I would love to see my work on the cover of a magazine or be featured on the cover of a magazine. And then I just let it go. And then um, I'm working in the studio and we get an email from a stylist. I think his name was Michael. And he wanted some head, some head wraps for the Vogue photo shoot. And he wanted some fabrics and things like that. Um, and he said he was from Vogue and I didn't believe him. So I was like, okay, sure, send me the call sheet and then I'll know. And they sent the call sheet. And so um, I think I had two days, I gathered some fabrics, then I was on set and I was styling both Iman's. It was incredible. Wow. Oh my yeah. gosh. And where was the shoot? Was it in New York? Or- New York, yeah. Okay. New York, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Isn't it funny how those things just kind of come in your life? Like you, you say it and then you forget all about it and then it just shows up. Yeah, I think that's why it happens because you're not attached, you're not expecting it, you just let it go. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's beautiful. So we'll make sure we put it, put it in um, the video portion of this podcast because it's gorgeous. Oh my God. Um, so where do you think you're going next with the wrap life, you know, in terms of products, in terms of maybe distribution? What are your thoughts? Yeah. So we're working on planning for 2024 and this time I'm incorporating my team. It's not just me sitting over here and penciling things out. So it's going to be a collaboration. Um, I know for sure that we want to focus on expanding more products Um, and then gaining some wholesale partnerships. We also want to improve our operations. Um, I feel like I'm talking about the internal business things. Uh, (laughs) That's okay. Um, Yeah, so when I think about products for our customers, I think about the things that I would want. Like I've been going to the beach a lot now, right? I wanna make really beautiful foldable sun hats. So that's one thing that we're planning and talking more about. Um, we also improved our satin line turban products. I'd like to expand that line as well. Pillowcases, the basics for hair care and self-expression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, and your stuff is so gorgeous too. You're like the photography mm-hmm. you do so well. Thank um, you. And I love all the prints and the bright colors. It's very self-expressed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this was such a great podcast. I would love for you to share where people can find you, your brand. Um, and I just want to say like, personally, you guys need to follow Nena because she be like, I'd be going to church up on your Instagram girl. Like it is so good and it's so authentically you. And it's like, we can relate to it so much. And like, we just barely scratched the surface on some of the, you know, topics and questions, you know, on this podcast, but highly recommend following you. So let people know where they can find you and the rap life. Yes, you can find me, Nena Stella, on Instagram, N and E N and A Stella. And then the Rap Life um, on Instagram as well. Um, you can also find us online, um, the rap.life. We're also sold at Target at Target.com. Oh, I love that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nena. Thank you.